Coming up on Nebraska Stories, connecting people with bikes, changing hearts and minds one at a time, a climber's reflections on Everest, a view like no other, and a tour with a little food, a little wine, and a whole lot of pottery. All it takes is a little elbow grease to get your own set of wheels from the Lincoln Bike Kitchen. Meet the team that keeps the gears moving. I think bikes are important for a community for a variety of reasons. A bike is more than a bike. It's a, a transportation and something that can completely change, change their lives. I think it can be a lot of different things to a lot of different people, just depending on the situation and, and what you want out of the, the bike. Bikes have played a significant role in the life of Pepe Fierro, founder of the Lincoln Bike Kitchen. I was living out of my car, and it was a bike that helped me get back on my feet. And uh, once I did get on my feet, I noticed kids walking to school, you know, to college. And I thought, well, if I could help an old guy like me, what would it do for them? So I started picking up bikes at yard sales and alleys, trash cans and take them over to the uh, bike shop downtown where they would tune them up and then I would park them in front of coffee shops. The issue still was there that I had a lot of bikes in my garage. Carol Smith said she had a storage for me and uh, she gave me the address and when I got there I thought it was the garage that turned out to be a little house. I'll put up a Facebook page and I'll put, we need volunteers, if you have any experience, bring it. If not, that's okay because I don't either. And we opened that 12 and I think at 12.15, the, two, the first two volunteers actually showed up, and the rest is history. You want that number for Peter's bike? Yes. We have uh, an earn -a bike program that takes uh, approximately 20 to 25 hours to complete. Um, when you start it, you have 10 hours that are required um, that you volunteer to the, to the kitchen. We have volunteers strip the bikes, uh, clean the shop, patch the tubes, do kind of thing, day in and day out things that keep us going. So then they get a bike because they have worked for it and they work to, with a mechanic to refurbish their bike. So you don't do any kind of going onto the grass and riding Tricks across? and all that. Yeah. Sometimes not really. No, not really? All right, let's go upstairs. We have a kids bike program. Uh, they come in, they get sized, our mechanics refurbish their bike and they walk out with a safe, well-functioning bike. It's to help kids get on bikes, um, without any requirements. Kids just need a good bike, and, and I think that that's an absolute necessity in a, in a child's life. Yep, much better. We've got a bike repair program. Your bike's not working, you come in, you see us. We've got really terrific, knowledgeable mechanics. You get your bike up on the stand, get it fixed, you keep going. The Lincoln Bike Kitchen ran for three years out of the house on 15th Street, but they soon discovered that a new location was needed. So in 2013, the Bike Kitchen moved to 1st Street. Although it's a better facility overall, the new location comes with a new set of challenges. The number one challenge is paying rent. The Lincoln Bike Kitchen does not charge for any of our services. You get a repair, we don't charge you. You need a, a part from our parts bin over here, we don't charge you. We don't charge for anything. So paying rent can be a little tricky. We have had really a lot of support from the community. We've held fundraisers. Uh, we had a grand opening party. We had a soup supper, and that's, that's been a good fundraiser. 
That's what this shop is about. Everybody coming together and doing what you can. And we have so many people who do so many different things. And I think that's that's like the real heart and soul of this place. Just come off and it's on the ground. Bikes are amazing. They're amazing machines and they're amazing for what they do to you. What I wanted was to see people get empowered again. You know, it's a kitchen to, to feed the lack of a transportation for those that need to get back on their feet. We help people get lives. We help people get healthy and stay healthy. We help them get around. We help them know their, their neighborhoods. And that's what we do. A bike is life. In a world where bullying seems almost unavoidable, a group of LA performers work with Lincoln High's Chorus on a performance designed to change hearts and minds. It gets better. However bad it is now, it gets better. And it can get great and it can get awesome. Your life can be amazing, but you have to tough this period of it out and you have to live your life so that you're around for it to get amazing. And it can and it will. In 2010, after a rash of teen suicides, syndicated columnist Dan Savage created this YouTube video and it quickly became a worldwide movement. It was a message of hope for young people being bullied. Specifically, lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender youth. It inspired 50,000 other videos of support, and it even led to the creation of a musical theater production, aptly named It Gets Better. The motto of the chorus is music with a mission, and the, the mission is to change uh, hearts and minds through the arts. And, the cast and features members of the Gay Men's Chorus of Los Angeles. They are in Lincoln as part of a week-long residency. But if you are a student at an unsafe environment, there's not, there's not great alternatives to And as you know, this is season five of the Interdisciplinary Arts Symposium with a special LGBTQA focus, which is why you The goal is to take performing arts and use them as a way to open up larger conversations and to sort of weave together the experience of watching the arts with the critical thinking that we normally teach at a university. How much is the community really involved in these issues? Is it because it is? I believe it's important. That's why I'm here. But conducting workshops and lectures is just one aspect of the community outreach effort. And I think that maybe just like even having an open dialogue about it is really, really hard. The residency culminates with a public performance featuring a local choir on stage with the cast in the show's finale. We've never had a high school choir before, but they proved to be very well prepared and they sound great. I can tell that it's something they care about and they're concerned about just by the way that they're performing. The Lincoln High School mixed chorus gets just two days of rehearsals with key cast members. You're too short to be back there. <laughs> You have to be in the front where everyone can see you. Mm -hmm. There we go. People are suffering about like suicide and depression. And sometimes we don't know who they are because they keep it inside. We sing to them and we be one of the audience and like, like hope for another day. Like I'm really kind of shy. I don't like being like in front of the audience. But then I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to like do it. <laughs> The show is full of humor. Rolf, the Nazis are here. Come with us. Have you never seen The Wizard of Oz? What? Are you serious? Just play the damn movie. <laughs> Yet the messages in the performance address very serious issues. Dear Mom and Dad, I'm so sorry. Everyone at school hates me. I just couldn't handle it anymore, and I know you would hate me too if you knew the truth. I hope you can forgive me someday. I love you. CJ.
cast member Sasha Sackett wrote three of the songs in the show. As a teenager, he was bullied because other students perceived that he was gay. He tries to understand. People wouldn't talk to me. It was sort of like gay by association. I was very much a person that isolated and kept things bottled in and didn't know how to ask for help. And, um, and I think that's the power of this show and what we do with our outreach. There are people here that want to help and um, asking for help is not such a bad thing at all. Fighting's not enough with love and barely let me for these actors, this isn't merely theater, and it isn't political. It's about saving lives. The fact of the matter is um, the suicide rate among LGBT youth is eight times as high as it is for a heterosexual child. And if I can go into one place and one environment and have one child see that there are options beyond what they can currently see, I think that that is the point and the job that we've done is, that's why we're here. Everybody has friends. No, not everybody has friends. That's preposterous. I'm telling you, I know this kid, and he does not have any friends. It's not an agenda of recruitment. Of course it's not the do. coming out show. You have someone to talk to, don't you? We don't want straight kids to be gay. We want to help your gay kids survive and succeed and see that there's a future for themselves. And, but there, like, take that bling. Because you, you both got a little uh, happier, mm -hmm. but let's take that feeling of happiness and hope. The arts and, kind of uh, provide a, a catalyst or a means of uh, getting into someone, breaking through someone's wall without necessarily having to th shout facts at them or opinions or statements. It's a way to kind of blend uh, that centerpiece emotional language and kind of touching them in a way that they wouldn't have necessarily been open to or thoughtful before. Not every member of the choir chose to participate, but for those who did, this is more than just a performance. I feel like there's not enough opportunities for someone to really help another person as a bisexual male. A couple years back, they would have helped me tremendously if I had someone say what we're saying in this play. I have a lot of friends who are LGBT. I think it's a great way to like support them and like have them know that there's people who care. People care. I care. I care for your well-being and like I think everybody should be loved. Like everybody should have a friend with them. Lincoln man was close enough to see and hear the avalanche that killed 16 Sherpas on Mount Everest. Robert Kay discusses the deadly accident and the future of climbing at Everest. It's something I've been dreaming of for 35 years. and I heard a noise, uh, a roaring jet engine sort of a noise. I knew what it was, it's an avalanche, you hear them every 15 minutes in base camp. Uh, watching 13 dead bodies be long-lined on a helicopter down to camp 
that was really troubling. A lot of people were at the helipad as the helicopters would come in. There was a Sherpa standing there looking to see who the bodies were because they're all friends. So that was kind of a, a very difficult day. By the end of that same first day, though, a, a group of Sherpas had kind of rallied and almost became like a mob going through the camp. Yeah, it quickly became a management versus uh, labor. Uh, we're going on strike. Uh, we've got these grievances and we're not going to be put aside any longer. But you got to keep in mind that it was a vocal minority of the Sherpas who were doing that. Most Sherpas don't have any resentment towards Westerners. Um, I have never met a bad Sherpa. I have never met a Westerner who didn't have the highest respect for the Sherpas. The Sherpas do all the hard work. They maintain a fantastic attitude while they're doing things that we couldn't even imagine doing. I've been to Nepal 12 times. I've spent over a year in the country. I have two Nepalese daughters. I've got dozens and dozens of friends throughout Nepal. My, my desire to climb hasn't changed. My love for the mountain, for the people, for the country, none of that's changed. A British aerial photography team spent 10 days capturing Nebraska from above for NET Television's Nebraska Land and Sky. Hear their surprising reactions to the landscape some refer to as flyover country. A British aerial photography team, Skyworks, joined an NET crew traveling across the state filming Nebraska's landmarks and hidden places from above. History is fascinating. You Americans often say, yeah, but we don't have any history. You know, you've got all the history in Europe and Castle, but your history is just different. It's still, I think, riveting because it's such a young country. We don't know Nebraska at all. So it's a wonderful experience just to, uh, just to see it for the first time ourselves. I've been doing this for a while, so I kind of, I know what Richard's looking for, the director. And while he might be working on one shot, I'm looking at setting up the next shot. It helps him, you know, creatively and uh, just expedites the whole thing. This is something we've just started doing and it's quite new. Um, it's editing together a little highlights reel. So what I'm doing right now is ingesting some of the footage into Final Cut on my laptop so that later on tonight uh, we can put together a few minutes of footage to show everyone um, involved what we've been up to today. Simon and I have worked together for 
five or six years over these projects, all the stuff in America. So he knows the sort of shots I like to do. So while I'm taking one shot, he'll be thinking about, you know, having a reveal from behind a tree or doing something. And also, I've worked with Ben for a number of years, they'll spot things. So, you, you know, suddenly we're flying along and I'm looking at the landscape there, and they'll suddenly see combine harvesting going on there. And, you know, make a decision, should we go and cover it, is the weather good? And then we'll go down and, and do it. So you just save a huge amount of time and often you don't have to communicate, which is quite good in some ways. Um, but yeah, it's so working as a team is really, is really important. I don't quite know what, what it is. There's a freedom. You're just three people in a vehicle, in that sense, left in your own to try and explore and uh, do something. I'm just endlessly fascinated with the view from the air. For me, it's just that view of, of seeing the world from a different angle. People go on an airline, what is the first thing they do because they want to check in early? They want a window seat. Why do they want a window seat? They want to see the world from an angle that they don't normally see. What we do is bring that view to their armchair in their, in their house. It's as, it's as simple as that. Finally, we hit the annual Omaha North Hills Pottery Tour for a little wine, a little food, and some great art. Last year, I think we were around 17, 1800. It does get a little easier in the sense that we know what has to be done. <laughs> well, this is a slip right here. It's a chance to meet the artist and um, see their, their recent work. This is how I make my work. These are all the steps involved. A lot of steps, I'm amazed. Yeah, and then They have done a really good job of getting some very good potters. I'm lucky it's my second time. They invited me last year, and I was lucky enough to be invited back. You could really grow a plant. That's beautiful. It's a really appreciated by an artist when a person buys from the artist. That looked like a heart. <laughs> People don't realize the talent that we have in this area. You know, when you get a chance to see the work, yeah, I think we're really blessed to have the people that we have here. <laughs> I think you like this one.
this particular clay has a high iron content, and then depending on how you're firing, whether you're firing with a lot of oxygen, with an excess of fuel, They made 40 dozen kolaches for today. I see it from last year to this is just building more. Buy art, buy local. <laughs> Watch our stories online at natnebraska.org slash Nebraska Stories. And go to Facebook to like us and leave a comment. Join the Nebraska Stories conversation. Nebraska Stories is funded by the Margaret and Martha Thomas Foundation and the Nebraska Office of Highway Safety. Sustained funding for arts coverage on Nebraska Stories is provided by the H. Lee and Carol Gendler Charitable Fund and the Nebraska Arts Council and Nebraska Cultural Endowment.